Entrepreneurially Thinking is a presentation of BioSTL and CET, Center for Emerging Technologies, with Rare Gem Productions, changing the way you view new ventures, including you on the pathway to success with your business in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. Here's your hosts, Cheryl and Christy. Now let's get thinking entrepreneurially. Welcome to the Entrepreneurially Thinking Podcast. We're here to energize your entrepreneurial mindset and create pathways for business success in the St. Louis region and beyond. I'm Christy Maxfield, the Director of Entrepreneur Development Services at the Center for Emerging Technologies. And I am laughing. I am Dr. Cheryl Watkins-Moore, Director of our Inclusion Initiative for BioSTL. And we are super excited to be starting our third Yay. season. Yes, I just wanted to say are. super excited. Yes. So I'm really glad I got the chance to do that. Um, this time last year, uh, we were, you know, doing a podcast was the last thing on our mind. I, and in fact, we weren't really sure that would actually be a thing. <laughs> but now we can't imagine what it would be like not to do the podcast. Absolutely. So we are thrilled that you have joined us on this journey and um, come with us as we meet new people and highlight the inspired and inspiring work of so many local inventors and professionals. We have had the opportunity to bring a lot of different people into the studio and and as you know, if you've been listening, or perhaps this is your first time, we want to peel away any limitations you might have uh, about mm -hmm. the way you think about small business, working for yourself, or being entrepreneurial right where you are. Mm -hmm. You can stay connected to the Entrepreneurially Thinking community on all of your favorite streaming platforms. You can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or simply visit us at entrepreneuriallythinking.com. Follow the hashtag EthinkSTL. And please feel free to submit ideas to us through our website. You know what? This is so funny. Uh, going back to what you said, Christy, could you imagine season three? No. <laughs> we but we're getting really good at this one. now. Yes. So if they stop us now, we're screwed. <laughs> Big time. So let's get season three started. Regular listeners know that Christy and I are passionate about connecting people. People, great ideas, companies, invention, and progress. That doesn't happen in isolation. It's important to connect with a community of like-minded people for support and inspiration that you need to really make your dreams a reality. It just so happens that there are two new places in St. Louis where you can find those people and resources. We've invited Christy and James Jackson with DK Annex. I'm really excited to talk to them because they are a husband and wife team. I would not be able to work with my husband as Nor we all I. know. No. I love no. you, sweetie, but mm -hmm. no, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. And Mark Bowers uh, with Brick City Makes to tell us more about the new facilities and communities they're building. We'll get that conversation started after this quick break. Now here's Make It Happen with Keith Sales Pro. According to Peter Handel, the CEO of Dale Carnegie Training Institute, here are five essential rules for great presentations. Number one, be yourself. If you pose as somebody you're not, your audience will know you're insecure and therefore disbelieve whatever you're saying. Two, tell stories. The purpose of a presentation is not to convey information. You can do that with a data sheet. The purpose of a presentation is to show how the information has meaning for what you're doing. Number three, practice. The very best public speakers make it seem as though the ideals are so new and original that the speaker is slightly surprised at what he or she is saying. Four, socialize. Audiences consist of individuals. Always arrive early and try to get to know some of the individuals in your audience that you're speaking to. And number five, brevity. For every presentation that wrapped up too early, there are a thousand that have gone on way too long. Today, remember, it can happen. It will happen. And together, we will make it happen. Follow Keith Sales Pro on Facebook or Twitter at Keith Sales Pro. Or visit his website at KeithSalesPro.com. It can happen. It will happen. And together, we will make it happen. My name is Mark Bowers, and I'm from BrickCityMakes.com. And to me, entrepreneurially thinking means maintaining an open mind to new ideas. So thank you, Christy, James, and Mark for joining us. Um, local listeners probably recognize your names and the names of your ventures, the DK Annex and Brick City Makes, from the recent press you've all received. Mm -hmm. And while your projects are separate and distinct, they're both in the city, 
and you're bringing life to old neighborhoods, old buildings, and in some cases, old industries. Mm -hmm. And you're really focused from from what we've come to learn on serving the people and businesses that are often underrepresented in what we call this entrepreneurship ecosystem. So if Christy and James, if you could get us started by telling us about yourselves and DK Annex and sort of your vision for what it is you're doing here in St. Louis, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, thank you for having us. We are so excited to be here and talk about our uh, new new venture of the DK Annex and our incubator space. Um, James and I have been married. We'll be married 20 years this year. Oh, no way. Yes. I know y'all can't yes. see them, but there is no way they are year. old no. enough to be married 20 years. No. Yes. Yes. I know. And I, think... I, want their, I want their secret sauce. <laughs> We're both looking at each other. We'll like, share the secret like, later. Like, really? <laughs> All right. 20 years. And Congratulations. And you we are, are in business. We've been in business, what, 18 years? I was going to say, oh, you guys are serial entrepreneurs, We right? are. We are. We have been in ministry together and yes. business together over 18 years. That's wonderful. And uh, I think that is one of the beauty... The beautiful things that keeps us together Mm -hmm. is that entrepreneurial spirit and passion Mm -hmm. around uh, helping people reach their full potential. That's sort of our personal mission Mm -hmm. um, and our business mission. And so every business or organization that we participate in or that we start has Mm -hmm. to do with that. People at the center. People at the center. Yeah. So who was your first business that you started? So our first business, and baby, I'll let you jump in, was really a ministry. Yeah, that was the first thing. In mm-hmm. 2000, we started uh, Shared Ministries. Okay. That uh, lasted... Was that here in St. Louis? Yes. Okay. And that started... That lasted roughly two years. mm mm-hmm. uh, Immediately after, we knew our focus. We wanted to deal with business, but we... Or church, but we needed to get outside of the four walls of church. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to deal with business. Mm-hmm. So we started Dreamcatchers Event Planning and Consulting Services. Ah. So if you can imagine that on a business card, we ran out of space <laughs> often. Like like our titles, right? right. It's, oh, the font gets smaller and the card doesn't get any right. bigger. And so we, Just the work gets bigger, we, right? Yeah, yes. No kidding. I believe we got charged more for checks and... <laughs> Hence now you had yeah. a nice little name. I exactly. like it. Exactly. So it was rebranded later, which yeah. is now the DK is short for okay. Dream Catchers ah. Event Planning and Consulting Services. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Working out of our home, you know, for the last many years that we've yes. done this. And so we finally have taken the leap to, you know, go into a brick and mortar space. And, uh, you know, it has just been awesome to see the growth that has come mm-hmm. from us moving out and taking that leap. It's sort of all happening at the same time. My career is in uh, education. I'm a mm-hmm. gifted coordinator for a school district that in the was area. Be my next question, because I'm like, yes. okay, most entrepreneurs <laughs> have a gig that's the yes. you know, yeah. bread and butter, the, the bread and bread butter, and, and butter. the benefits. Yes, it's the BBB. Right? Yes, yes, <laughs> like that. yes, yes. Mm-hmm. But we have been very, very fortunate. You know, James is a professional musician, and has been so for 20 years, and wow. has been able to sustain our our family professionally with his music. That's and, phenomenal. Uh, it, yeah. it is, and so. I think one of the differentiators with him is his entrepreneurial eth- work ethic mm-hmm. that separates him from just the talent of being a musician. Mm-hmm. And so sure. that's really been, you know, has made us successful. And so we just wanted to share what we knew. Um, we were sort of seen as connectors in the community. Mm-hmm. Um we love bringing people together. Mm-hmm. We love sharing our knowledge mm-hmm. and creating space and making people comfortable and empowering them to see that, you know, you are an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just amazing to see the light bulb come on when you see someone that has been in business forever and they don't consider themselves an entrepreneur. We find that a lot. Yes. The language yes. Yes. is a huge mm-hmm. thing. Yes. Um, how you self-identify means whether or not you're going to tune into this podcast yes. or not. Yes. And yes. so our our goal is to really try and make sure that as many people as possible feel like this this tent yes. uh, includes them yes. and that the the language we use isn't somehow another barrier yes. to them getting connected with who they need mm-hmm. to get to. So yes. I knew you were our people yes. when <laughs> when I saw what you were all doing. Um, yes. And you've created a brick and mortar space yeah. not too far from Brick City. Yeah. And you guys are in the neighborhood. So... We're neighbors. You are neighbors. So, Mark, can you tell us a little bit more about Brick City Makes and Mm -hmm. sort of 
your vision for that? Because I think it really dovetails with what James and Christy are trying to create as well. Very nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Brick City Makes is an old manufacturing building that's being relaunched as essentially what we're calling a hub. So we're not referring to it as an incubator or an accelerator. Uh, We basically believe that best practices in entrepreneurship, best practices in growth can be taught to willing individuals and companies. Absolutely. See it every day. So mm-hmm. that's what we want Brick City Makes to be. And when you think about it, what that does is it opens it up to everyone in the community that uh, you know conveniently does not have a PhD in a STEM subject. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you've got a lot of entrepreneurial ideas out there that are scalable. And as they scale, they employ people and they create new mm-hmm. wealth. And that wealth can go back into investments in innovation mm-hmm. and in, in, in new technologies or in, in new uh, products. Uh, but there's not really a, there's not really a hub or a catalyst to to do that. So it's more than a real estate play. There's programming involved, which makes it unique nationwide. Mm-hmm. But that's what the emphasis and the focus is on. Excellent. So, Christy and James, what kind of entrepreneurs are you typically finding mm-hmm. are finding you or you're finding them in the work that you're doing? Sure. So we have a variety of entrepreneurs that we have met, and I think the beauty of our social synergy project, which is our incubator space. Um, we are we call ourselves an incubator because we build we build entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and help prepare them for the spaces around the city, the resources mm-hmm. that are available. Because some of these opportunities, they are available, but it's daunting mm-hmm. to get connected. You may not understand how to get connected. Right. What is a pitch deck? What is, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And yeah. so we are the space that will educate you about that, will support you. We will show up with mm-hmm. you to networking events if you are not comfortable in those spaces. Oh, you'll be the wing. Right. Man, we I are love the wingman. Wing yeah. We have found that that is a need. With it is a huge it's need. It's a huge need. Mm-hmm. And even with those that sometimes we are listening here. We have entrepreneurs come in all the time and say, you know, I'm working from my home and I'm asking myself, what do you think about this idea? And I tell myself, (laughs) I think it's a great idea. It's like, I'm done with that. I need motivation. I need to get out of my, you know, my four walls. And so our entrepreneurs, we we have a 71 year old author, speaker, travels. Um, He has written stage plays that have been performed across mm-hmm. the country. We have caterers. We have a mobile dining uh, lounge. Oh. Um, we have travel agents. We just have a variety of entrepreneurs. Um, just so creative and need help navigating the startup space in our city. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's not tech, biotech, which those spaces are great and amazing. Yes. Mm-hmm. But there are additional industries. Right. It's in, not the be all and end all. It's not right. the right. and end and it's not greater than or less than. Right. Mm-hmm. So we are trying to advocate for additional space mm-hmm. in that community yes. um, and to be seen as viable businesses as well. So I want to come back great. to that advocacy piece mm-hmm. in just a second because, again, Mark, I we spend a lot of time together. So I get to pick your brain about sort of what's going on in the ecosystem and get your perspective on things. And one of the things we've shared is that that this is an, a really important hub like you've used to, to describe Brick City Makes, but that it isn't the be all and end all and that there are a range of other entrepreneurs out there. Mm-hmm. So who are you seeing? Because I know you have a particular niche of company and entrepreneur and business owner that you're really trying to serve at Brick City Makes. Yeah, so uh, our our target is very, very refined. It tends to be a company that is cash flow positive, that has a manufactured good or product. So money in the door. Yeah, but the problem and the, the challenge that they have is that their, their, their dream is their nightmare. So they all want to land a big national account, but mm-hmm. when they do, they don't have the footprint to produce to fill it. Mm-hmm. So we offer under one roof essentially two acres. So if you come to me and you say, hey, you know, we need more space, fortunately we got the account, we can do that within our facility. I know people in the manufacturing community now that have grown, their lease cannot grow with them. They're trapped and locked into their lease. Mm. Their landlord relations are very contentious, Mm -hmm. and they have materials and goods in different states of production that are stored at up to six different locations around Mm -hmm. the city. So they're making do. It's inefficient. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. And it looks ridiculous to outside customers if Mm -hmm. they find out. And we take those problems away. The other problem that we take away and the other thing that that we target at Brick City Makes is that firm that's, that's stable 
but entering a period of scalability. Mm -hmm. So they're not startups, they're scale ups. Mm -hmm. There's nobody that's serving scale ups. Sure. Your biggest problem as a scale up is you generally in the manufacturing space grew up around a specific technology. So you have a degree from Rankin, you understand mm -hmm. how to run the machines, maybe you're an engineer or you have a finance degree, something along those lines. But when it comes to the front end of the business, when it comes to product management, new product development, and business development, you generally haven't put much thought into that as a business owner or professional, yet that's where your biggest opportunities for scalability are. Mm -hmm. So what this facility does is it offers you opportunities to learn directly from people in those professions, as well as to learn from your peers specific to those areas that have to do with, with scalability. So you have mentors that, that can help them with the uh, product management, the sales piece, the things that you just talked about. Yes. And then being able to um, them being able to scale their business from a manufacturing standpoint, because the, now do they bring the technology from a manufacturing standpoint or do you guys have the equipment and it it's only fit for a certain type of industries? How does that work, Mark? We have no equipment. <clears throat> so the equipment is yours. You know, even things that are relatively straightforward to manufacture between mm -hmm. companies, you'll find customization or variability to a lot of machines. Mm -hmm. So trying to find something that's a one size fits all across mm -hmm. all manufacturing, even if you're looking at things that are very, very similar, is really difficult. You know, those things tend to, the production machinery tends to get, in some senses, tailored to the <clears throat> specific needs and, and wants of mm -hmm. the individuals that are running the, the firm. So we're not in the business at all of common or shared equipment. Mm -hmm. What we're in the business of is focusing exclusively on that front end. So we can't tell you how to make it more efficiently. Mm -hmm. We can't tell you how to engineer it. We wouldn't try. What we can do is offer you advice on how to approach a national account and why that's different from a, a smaller account. From a sales per And I think what's really interesting, and I think um, uh, the key point to what you guys are doing for those startups who are just testing the market with manufacturing they could probably find space within an existing manufacturer for you know for producing their product right and in, in batch manufacturing when they hit that point though it's almost a trigger point where now they're scaling that's where you guys come in be, because you're filling that gap now from them having to build brick and mortar. Well, they're, they're having to bring their own equipment, but they're not having to build a plant per se. Is that? That's correct. So it's, it's that flip where they go from doing some contract or having a, a manufacturer doing some contract manufacturing for them to now they're getting this big account, this first big account. That is, uh, yeah, that's absolutely correct. So, uh, you know, a couple things that we can do are we either have programming already in place or are developing programming that will be exclusive to our tenant base. So there is an opportunity to learn your way through that curve of scalability. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also have a database that I was surprised to learn is almost 10,000 deep, uh, you know, in terms of unique email addresses, and that's a great deal of connectivity, specifically here in the central Midwest. So if you do need partners, we can either get you partners within the building or we can get you partners from within the community through our database and our connections. That was going to be my next question Absolutely. because I think the partnership piece is pretty cool, especially if you are young and scaling, having that ability to collaborate and partner with uh, other organizations it's really key. And Another thing that I think that, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to get in manufacturing has a, the ethnographic composition mm -hmm. of the ownership base looks like the 1950s. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's some programming that we're really, really, really early stage on mm -hmm. that I've kind of trial floated by you guys before. Mm -hmm. And I think that in several years time, it's going to take a long time mm -hmm. to develop. You're talking about transitioning ownership. But I think we've got an opportunity to change what that demographic composition mm -hmm. looks like, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, I think that's an opportunity, even if you if, even if you strip that out of the mix, you're still saving jobs. Mm -hmm. And number three, I'll give you an example from the other extreme. I'm sitting way halfway to Columbia, Missouri, with a guy, you know, like late career white guy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, passing the business to somebody eventually. We're sitting in a subway. Two people come up to us and ask him about new, innovat new innovations that they want his firm to take a look at. And all of a sudden it dawned on me. He's running a manufacturing company, but he's what, what he's really running is an economic incubator that's below mm -hmm. the radar screen of any politician. Mm -hmm. right. So when you look at these lost little courts, mm -hmm. these little business courts that have been around since World War II that mm -hmm. are hidden throughout North City and North County, mm -hmm. 
and, and you see those going away, it's more yeah. than the risk of losing tens of jobs. It's yeah. an opportunity to transition that to somebody that now the neighborhood would feel comfortable Absolutely. bringing yes. their ideas yes. to. Yes. Yep. This is really unique. Um, maybe you can talk to us about how do you, how you guys came up with your with this idea because it does exist in other markets. And I think what's interesting about St. Louis, St. Louis was a hub for manufacturing years mm-hmm. ago. It changed. Um, you know, so maybe you can talk to us about how did you guys come up with this idea? I think that the the emphasis in St. Louis changed. And I think that, you know, we don't do a really good job about bragging about what we're good at. So there's a lot that's hidden away in, in business courts and, and business parks throughout the region. And we were really eager to drive past that to go see a 19-year-old that's convinced himself he's going to overthrow Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> as economic developers yeah. and as... And as politicians, right. we don't we don't bother to stop and take a look and peek in the door where the actual mm-hmm. jobs are. So, mm-hmm. we're there are several things that are unique about uh, about our organization. So, first of all, as you know, St. Louis Makes was the original programming organization that came together with the sales community development to work on Brick City Makes. Mm-hmm. And we toured and had uh, dialogue with a number of different facilities throughout the country. Went and toured uh, facilities as far away as Brooklyn. Uh, mm-hmm. Chicago. We talked to a number of different people. Mm-hmm. And what we came to learn was that there was a lot of real estate out there. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a lot of programming. And the programming that was out there was very often, uh, more often than not, had some government tie, was government-based in some way, shape, mm-hmm. or form. So it wasn't private sector solutions. And the programming that was available, um, we really couldn't find anything that focused on the front end of the business. Mm-hmm. So we're solving real estate problems and stability problems, mm-hmm. but we're also taking somebody who... You know, that awkward thing, I I call it sort of a tweener space. You know, a company Mm -hmm. gets large enough that they need somebody that the ownership can pass the baton to, Mm -hmm. that they can trust to go make a a call Mm -hmm. at a really big, really difficult, really prestigious national Mm -hmm. account. But the reality is that that person to hire in the open market would cost more than the owners taken out of the business now. So you're in between that space where what you need and what you can afford are completely out of sync. That's the other problem that we solve. You like you guys, all three of you, you just described you're all connectors in some sort of way. And that's the theme we're going to come back to right after this break. We all have stress and it affects each of us differently. NFL Super Bowl champion Roland Williams. You know, we can't say just because I tried to reach out to three counselors and they didn't help me, I'm quitting now. Mm-hmm. Just because I failed in ninth grade and I failed on um, three or four subjects, and, you know what I mean, I'm behind the eight ball, I'm giving up now. Just because I committed a crime and I've done some things because of the pain and anger and a moment of anger, that doesn't mean that my life is done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I had a baby early on in my life, that means it's a wrap. No, 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 no. Alive and well is attainable for all of us. We have to have a inner spirit of learning what that means to persevere. That means continuing despite delay in accomplishing your goal. That's why I'm here today, and that's why I want to share with the young people. Take the time to care for yourself and thrive, because when you feel better, you'll do better. You'll see. Visit AliveAndWellSTL.com to learn more. I'm James Jackson. I'm Christy Jackson. We're from DK Solutions. Entrepreneurially thinking to us means finding your passion, taking a risk to share that with the world. So, James, one of the themes that Mark brought up and and Christy touched on as well was that need to really connect people, that the network and getting the right people connected to the right expertise is really important. How have you seen that play out at DKNX? My wife had a brilliant idea a few years ago that um, when she mentioned it, I was thinking, what in the world is that? <laughs> However, it works. It's called Dinner with 12 Strangers. Oh, tell us I've more. about that. And so what happens is you sit at a table with 12 mm-hmm. strangers. There's one mentor. There's one professional that we call in to facilitate the questions at the table. Mm-hmm. Awesome. You just have a name tag on with first name. Mm-hmm. There's no we like that. title. Professional and, anonymity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even when you talk through the questions, you cannot say what you do. Mm-hmm. Very important. It's not part. until the end, after you've eaten, discussed, talked, laughed, ha- heard music, you know the person. Mm-hmm. Right. And at the end, you find out who the professional is at the table, what everyone does. At that point, you've established a personal relationship with the VP of U.S. Bank, with mm-hmm. uh, the director of whatever big organization. Mm-hmm. 
and now you are not you're not overwhelmed right it breaks uh, down, people. and yes. it breaks down I think the stereotypes the barriers mm. some people look at a title and they're like oh my god I'm not going to talk to them it's because yes. yeah it's or very they put a lot of weight in it what they really need to do is realize it's yes. just another data point and yes. right? you put on your pants just like that's I put right. on my pants so you point, know I think that's how yeah. Yeah. It, it levels that playing field Absolutely. which is yeah. really yeah. cool and for both parties for the leaders the mm-hmm. professionals as well yeah. because sometimes you just want to come in the space and just be Christy yes. right you know what I mean totally yes. mm-hmm. absolutely so, so how often do you do that I was going to say when, okay because we're foodies sure well we actually and we like meeting people Cool. I'm like <laughs> food we music actually, and cool people. Yeah. Our next yeah. one is April 23rd. Okay, and we are still seeking mentors. We're still seeking strangers. How do you um, um, decide who gets to the table? Well, we like to meet really cool people, well, and here's, here's we kind of put them on the list and say yes. we have to invite them to be a mentor for the next one. Yes. So you know, got I'm sitting here checking my list. calendar right now. April 23rd. Now. It's a Sunday it's at a five Sunday. o'clock. It will be held at the DK Annex, and um, we are so excited. And we've added another layer to the dinner this year um, we are doing a pop up uh, pitch competition so Ooh. we're inviting entrepreneurs to pitch their business ideas to the strangers Very cool. and the strangers will choose the best pitch mm-hmm. and we will put a little seed funding um, to their idea yes. and so the also the beauty in that is if you don't win the pitch competition mm-hmm. there's probably still going to be someone in that space mm-hmm. that wants Connect to network to. with you and to connect Absolutely. with you. Absolutely. How often so, do you hold that Chris? We try to do it year? twice a year try that to do it twice a year fun. it's so much yeah. fun yes. and it, it started with 12 strangers and it has grown it has grown to about 36 and 4 I mean so each year it gets bigger and bigger so and dinner bigger. becomes a larger affair there's it's more a people yes. Yes. small group there's we a, keep the table small you know there's mm-hmm. 6 to 8 or you know at each table we try to keep those conversations mm-hmm. small but it just becomes a phenomenal network that and is fun so event. cool yes. that's so, amazing I, yes. yeah we, well we've just raised our hands here in the studio awesome and we're awesome. Also encouraging you all who are listening because yes. we've talked a lot, and you'll always hear this from us that there are many, many, many ways mm-hmm. to get involved in the ecosystem, mm-hmm. and so it's not just entrepreneurs; it's mentors, right, subject yes. matter experts, yes. it's professional advisors, yes. it's um, people, people who, who are eager to cool connect. People. Yes, yes. yes. Cool yes. innovations. That's absolutely true. So, so many yeah. um, as usual, you'll that. listen to the end. You'll figure out how to contact and reach mm-hmm. everybody and raise your hand mm-hmm. for this as well. But that is incredible so yes. um and we've talked a lot about the the close proximity of your your ventures and so yes. benton park is is that technically i know that's where dk mm-hmm. annex yes. is mm-hmm. mark is are you benton park or are you adjacent to benton park technically we're adjacent we're fox park fox yeah. park so we've that's... got fox and benton park mm-hmm. together yes. which really if you're familiar with the city yeah are are very close proximity mm-hmm. to oh, each other yeah. so it sounds yeah. like there could also be a lot of cross-pollination south city mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It's, it's thrive south, it's city. Just south of where i live so yeah. mm-hmm. i'm i'm always really excited mm-hmm. there and you all t- also touched on this idea of hidden gems mm-hmm. so christy you mentioned earlier that you have a 70 year old author playwright um at, you know in in addition to a caterer and a travel agency mm-hmm. and mark you've seen that those below the radar mm-hmm. tucked away 1950s strip mall industrial park they hide some amazing goings on mm-hmm. so to speak could both of you actually you know share some stories of what those hidden gems would be you know and i'll throw it open whoever wants to to start well for us we find that one of the challenges with um, supporting entrepreneurs in the city to identify those hidden gems is, you know, the access um, mm-hmm. to the resources that are available, mm-hmm. um, the inclusion in those spaces. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, you know, let's face it, we are humans first mm-hmm. and we want to, those basic needs met. We want to feel welcome. We want to see right. ourselves in those spaces. We want yes. to be able to connect. Um, and so diversifying those resources. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I try not to take it personal because I realize that it's probably more about proximity. Mm-hmm. than trying to exclude certain groups. Mm-hmm. But we have to begin to open up those avenues mm-hmm. to put ourselves in spaces that we are not typically in mm-hmm. to uh, to begin to grow our networks. Mm-hmm. And we know that works. It works. Um, it you works. know, because you've heard us talk about this 
Square One program that we do here at CET. Mm -hmm. Proximity means that I could very easily fill our subject matter expert lineup for our 10 week program in the fall with a couple phone calls and emails in about, you know, three weeks time, Mm -hmm. I could have 10 weeks of programming. Mm -hmm. You know, when you take the time to actually call that person and say, thanks so much for your service, but I'm actually trying to find a woman or an African American or an Asian American Mm -hmm. or Latino um, who can um, speak to that same level of expertise because it's really important now that we've been successful in attracting participants from those backgrounds that they see themselves as well. So um, if again, another opportunity to raise your hand that if you're a subject matter expert that we need you in the community and at least I recognize that my immediate circle, my immediate proximity Mm -hmm. needs to I need to actively expand the horizons on that. Well, I think so. that's, that's exactly why, you know, our our organizations, both of our organizations, because BioSTL, that was one of the issues that they saw early in yeah. 2000. They did. To say, you know what, we're building a community, a startup community here, and BioSTL was focused on the biosciences because that's the history of where the organization came from. But what they saw was this is a male and pale environment. And we need to understand how do we change the dynamics here. This is 2008. So fast forward to what we're doing now, and especially the work that we're doing in our inclusion initiative. That's what I, I think with Christy and myself and other organizations, we're trying to connect with those with folks like what you're doing Mm -hmm. and making sure that's a dual connection because you're seeing people and you're meeting people right where they are and like you said being able to pass them on so that they have the opportunity to get either greater bigger resources or um, meeting other people that can help build their businesses Mm -hmm. this is what this ecosystem is and should be about it shouldn't be the the great divide if you live if you don't live in the cortex district then too bad for you um we need to connect our entire ecosystem because only if we all rise then we all do well not just some of our communities Mm -hmm. so i i really appreciate what you guys are doing and mark how are you reaching out how are you guys uh, going to reach out you introduced me to freddie lee and his wife, mm-hmm. and they do uh, ghetto sauce. And, and it is the best barbecue sauce. Oh my god, sauce. it's amazing! Oh my god! <laughs> and he's in like he's in hundreds of retail outlets, mm-hmm. Schnucks and Deerbergs, and I mean he's in Columbia. He's mm-hmm. hand delivering this product to Columbia and going out to Kansas City and looking at California for expansion. And um, it's completely under the radar. So how are you meeting folks like that? Yeah, he was actually in Startup Connection two years ago. So just so everybody knows. Okay, so he wasn't just completely start- <laughs> hidden. <laughs> but it took two years. It took, for- but he's been doing a lot of work before that two years. Yeah. I, I, I don't know that I have an answer to that. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. seriously, I just, you know, I meet people, I tell them what I'm looking for, and then years later I may hear from them and they'll be mm-hmm. an introduction. I mean, it, you know, that's really the way that it's, mm-hmm. it's scaled. But being open to having those conversations. and Well, I think recognizing the potential that is represented in those conversations. I mean, you know, do the math. It's not super complicated. You get mm-hmm. something into grocery retail, that's a high turn environment. You can go into but the seven know, figures, eight figures really quickly. What you said, though, I think is really key. A lot of people, and I think what you mm-hmm. said, Christy and James, a lot of people think of you have to be in this high tech. You have to have a Ph.D. Yes. and blah, blah, you know, all these degrees. You don't. Mm-hmm. You you have a great idea and you are connected into the ecosystem. You can take that great idea mm-hmm. uh, forward. And you guys are uniquely situated because, Mark, what you have doesn't exist in the St. Louis market today. So you're bringing an opportunity that didn't exist here and meeting the needs of folks who are in the manufacturing environment trying to develop technology and innovation Mm -hmm. what i see you guys doing christy and james is you're meeting people right where they are in the communities and saying hey you know what we're eager to help you we're eager to connect you Mm -hmm. that doesn't you know we've got to get more of christy's and james out there to do that so that (laughs) we can really uh create Mm -hmm. more innovation in our community i'm going on a tangent but i love what you you guys i love when you preach i love Um, what you guys are doing but uh you know it's reading each other into the narrative Mm -hmm. right so being able to see that without all of these um, folks creating new and and vibrant businesses, we don't thrive. But we also know 
that are particularly um, African American community mm -hmm. will start a lot of businesses, mm -hmm. but not get as much follow on capital. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. That's right. And so that's one of the things that we're really trying to address as well, because mm -hmm. I know we feel it keenly, even in the mm -hmm. um, IT and bioscience mm -hmm. space, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it's not enough to just bring people in the front end of the pipeline. Mm -hmm. It's really how do we make sure that there's opportunities yes. working through? Yes. And I'm getting a lot of head nods. Yes. Um, and I and I mentioned this um, because one of the things that's persistently a challenge is that that lack of generational wealth mm -hmm. right and I was just curious about sort of the conversations mm -hmm. you might all be having about not only how this creates an opportunity for a family today mm -hmm. and an, an individual today but have you have you seen people really focusing on how this also helps to close that generational wealth gap mm -hmm. yes what, 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 what we do with DK solutions DK annex social synergy we try to present to all the entrepreneurs Hey, let's look at all the avenues we can do that don't cost anything. Mm -hmm. Let's get you financial literacy. Let's mm -hmm. get you a financial planner in front of you. Mm -hmm. Let's get all these people that will donate their time to mm -hmm. help you. Uh, we'll help build their website for free. Wow. Um, we help put a whole media package together. Mm -hmm. So I launched a media service where we do full video production, audio, music. I've been in the music industry for years, mm -hmm. and so I have a full studio, mm -hmm. but then got into video because every next transition, every entrepreneur, every musician we sat down mm -hmm. with uh, didn't have any digital press, mm -hmm. any thing to show. Right. Mm -hmm. sure. And so... I figured, hey, let me help them. And so we started mm -hmm. getting into programming and uh, helping merge the gap with the creatives and mm -hmm. the tech. Yeah. So now we work with helping with apps and interviews and mm -hmm. putting it all visually right. together. But we wanted them to know, hey, you don't have to have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You just have to have your plan together. Big plan. And passion. Good plan and, your passion, and good people yes. mm -hmm. will take care of all right. And once you have it all together and that package together, mm -hmm. when you sit down and talk about it, it'll all make sense to the mm -hmm. person hearing it. Mm -hmm. Because you're competing with big fish. Mm -hmm. That's right. If this big company already has a website and you only say, oh, yeah, check out my Facebook page. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, that doesn't. Right. You know, so we're trying to get the entrepreneur to compete by at least having the basics mm -hmm. right fundamental the yeah. fundamental yeah. things right. in place yeah. mm -hmm. now how are you color are you all collaborating with yes. some of the eco the resources here in the ecosystem we are we are and this has been so great because everyone has been so supportive throughout the ecosystem we just had we have to give a shout out to byron price at u.s bank mm -hmm. awesome. he has come in and been so supportive of our entrepreneurs mm -hmm. with financial literacy helping them with getting their business back Banking in order mm -hmm. and just so supportive with those resources. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it is just great. And honestly, for us, we're focused on utilizing the small business for our suppliers and as vendors. And so when we're utilizing um, any resources, mm -hmm. we start with the small business first. That's mm -hmm. a huge so lesson right then and there. It it's source is. local and source, yes. source mm -hmm. from the business owners. Yes. You know. And encouraging other small businesses to do the same thing. Yep. Um, because you have all big businesses started as a small business. So, yes. Yeah, so yeah. we are um, trying to build and expand. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at adding a mentors um, you know to our ecosystem mm -hmm. and so in talking with uh, Kiana Daniels yes. we are, um, she's just been a mm -hmm. great resource for us she's leading yeah. one of our office hours we have office hours um, sessions where we bring in speakers to talk about various topics and so she'll be with us March 21st mm -hmm. great talking about maximizing mentorship Excellent. and so just being able to plug in um, you know Weibo has been a really great support mm -hmm. um, with us Grace and sharing Hill. resources Grace Hill I was just teaching a class there mm -hmm. last night mm -hmm. so we're expanding you know because we, we feel we're right out there with you we're growing just like the mm -hmm. businesses that we're um, helping and, I and see, so we're open to partnerships I was going to say more. between you and and Mark, oh yeah, you guys should be certainly yes, talking for about for sure, for um, sure, because Mark has a ton. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've known Mark now; it's been dog years. About. <laughs> <laughs> 
two hundred years. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> but he has a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of experience that I think that yes. your uh, the people that are coming into your incubator mm-hmm. can certainly leverage off of, vice versa. Yes. You know, and I think the connections probably um, mark with you and Rank. I think you mentioned Rankin yeah. as a as a partner. They're on the, the president Rankin's on the board of St. Louis Makes. Yep. Yeah, so there's a lot of synergy, yes. and just with yeah. Christy and myself, if we can, you know, work with you guys, yes. connect you further, because mm-hmm. just like you said, it's the wingman thing. Yes. I, I think I'm impressed that it's you guys huge. come out mm-hmm. because I think we've heard from a lot of folks of color. Yes. You know, Venture Cafe is great, it is. but if you have 500 people that look like don't look like you, it's and you walk up in there. Mm-hmm. It's very intimidating. Absolutely. Yes. yes. It's and so intimidating. I don't go over there. Well, and you know, we've talked a lot about that. You know, yeah. if the it's corner true. bar doesn't look like you're supposed to be there, then yeah. if you don't go in unless somebody uh, regular has invited you. Right. Exactly. Um, yes. And yeah. so we um, I'm. I've been trying to do the wingman thing myself, and I'm just really excited to know there's other wing yes. people out oh, there and, yes. and doing yes. that. So and I love the dinner for, what is it? Dinner, dinner with 12? strangers. Dinner, dinner with, with strangers. strangers. Yes. yes. I love the manufacturing piece on here, You're man. You're just in love. I'm just in love today, <laughs> I love dude. it. This is great. The, the whole notion of the corner bar needing to look like you, I mm. think, is a notion that we're both addressing and we're yes. both addressing in this neighborhood but mm-hmm. I think we've got greater opportunity in manufacturing space you have a lot of hidden manufacturing companies yeah. smaller yes. companies they're too small to sell they're mm-hmm. too big to walk away from and they're, mm-hmm. they're tucked away in sort of legacy pockets of, mm-hmm. of zoning that you know they've been there literally mm-hmm. for decades yeah mm-hmm. you know, finding some way to create those as uh, you know as ownership transitions come up and opportunities come up and mm-hmm. finding some way to make those maybe look a little bit more like the immediate neighborhood around them indirectly solves the problem by creating a corner bar that looks like the neighborhood. Absolutely. Now you're comfortable bringing your ideas in and talking yes. about innovations that otherwise never would have been commercialized, never would have been realized. I think this is a great opportunity for, especially for minorities that have not considered, you know, I don't want to start a business from the very, very, you know, exactly start, but I can acquire a business. I can come in and buy a business and be able to be an entrepreneur in that way, which I think a lot of our I think folks we've just, have not considered. Yeah, and I think we've just stumbled on one of our next topics mm-hmm. because I think the um, you can uh, build or you can buy, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Yes. And uh, really exploring what the buy possibilities might be, mm-hmm. how those could keep um, thriving businesses in local communities mm-hmm. and then change the, the, the makeup of who's actually running those yes. companies. So um, stay and, tuned and, and and keep an eye on us as that as a future topic. But um, once again, we've mm-hmm. come to the end of our time together far quicker than one could ever anticipate. So we want to thank you all for being here. And this does uh, not mean that us. we don't bring you back sometime. We just we've just come to the end of our little just segment. This time here. together, yes, just this time together. <laughs> there's dinner. There's you know unveiling of manufacturing mm-hmm. space. There's all sorts of wonderful things yes. to come, right? Um, and you know we're really hard to run away from, so you can't get rid of us. <laughs> Frankly, <laughs> not even if you try. Um, but we want to make sure that uh, folks can find you. So, yes. James, yeah. can you tell us where uh, everybody can find you and Christy and the work that you're doing? Yes, you can go to DKSocialSynergy.com or DKSolutionsEvents.com. Hmm. And all of our information is there. Awesome. We're on Facebook, mm-hmm. Instagram, yes. we have DK Annex and Social Synergy pages. Um, so you can find us there as well. And they are right in South St. Louis. Yes. 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 Within walking distance of Brick City Makes. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> and where can we find out more about Brick City Makes? <laughs> BrickCityMakes.com or stlewismakes.org stlewismakes.org or BrickCityMakes.com with no punctuation or... or uh, and anything in between the words. Fantastic. Great. Well, thank you. We hope we've um, piqued your curiosity uh, to learn more about these folks and the work that they're doing and make sure that you can raise your hand in whatever capacity makes the most sense for you at this time um, and they in need, your journey. Both of them need help. So They guys, need you volunteer. and are here to help you. So yes. whatever side of that you end up on, please um, mm-hmm. make yourselves known. And on that note, thank you. And thank we'll, you. Uh, we'll be back soon. Thank you guys very much. Changing the way you view new ventures. Igniting your thinking about entrepreneurship 
It's Entrepreneurially Thinking. Get connected and discover more. Visit our website for show notes, resources, information about our guests, upcoming events, and of course, all your favorite episodes. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them for us in the comment sections and be sure to leave us a five-star rating on iTunes. The best way to show love is to share. Let everybody know that you're thinking entrepreneurially. So visit our website, entrepreneuriallythinking.com. Hashtag EthinkSTL. Entrepreneurially Thinking is another positive production of Rare Gym Productions. Thanks for listening.